So thank you for, for that. Um, and Pablo has already, I think, uh, alluded to it in his, in his uh, intervention or question. He was referring to, uh, to the human right. And so I think we're, we're segueing also to, uh, um, to, the next, uh, to the next block that we have. Um, here I have to say that, that we were, um, I had the honor of speaking to, to Leo Heller, the Special Rapporteur for the Right on uh, Water and Sanitation um, in Stockholm at the World Water Week, and he was very appreciative of us taking this initiative um, forward. Um, we followed this up with, um, with himself and with Hilal Elver, so basically the two rapporteurs for the two different uh, uh, respective human rights to this issue. Um, and I would say when it comes to sort of the, the SDGs, and this, you know, we're speaking of the umbrellas we're below, on the one hand, we have the SDGs of, of countries making commitments to want to reach uh, certain things, but then also we have sort of the human rights underlaying all of that. Um, and I'm very happy that in our WASH network, we have uh, Hannah Neumeyer, who is the head of human rights team at WASH United. Um, and any time within our German WASH network when we sort of, yeah, there, there are human rights things going on, something to be commented on and so on, we always look to Hannah for, for guidance because when it, when it comes to human right, obviously different words can mean very thing, different things in, a, in, in legal aspects. For us, a lot of times there's a huge learning curve of, 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 of ha having um, Hannah uh, exchange with us and, and teach us. So I'm very happy that this next block I'll be handing over to to Hannah, so please do come to the front. Thank you. And, um, and I do have to add that the commitment of both of the special rapporteurs led to them actually sending us films. It was clear quite early on that, they wouldn't be, that it wouldn't be possible for them to make it because they're in part on, on national missions right now. But um, the sending of videos did raise some technical issues um, with us being actually to, 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 to display and play them now. Um, so we will, we will get back to the rapporteurs um, wanting to honor their statements that they've sent, of course, um, and with respect to these technical difficulties, ask them how we can distribute them to all of you later. So th that having said, I think Hannah will still make very good use of this time and educate us on the interlinkages of the human rights. Please, you can come. Thank you. As you, um, as you I don't know. I think I'll be walking around because I will be using this wall. Um, this will be a slightly improvised session now um, because we planned it differently, but that doesn't matter. And I think it will hopefully give us a chance to interact a lot. Um, I want you to talk and to tell me things as much as I'll try to bring some, some points across. Um, so I've prepared some cards and stuff. Um, I, I want this to be a, a learning session, really. Um, oh, that's a shit idea. Let me move back. <laughs> um, and now I have a double mic, right? Okay. <laughs> um, so we've been talking water, sanitation, nutrition yesterday. Um, there were some there were actually a lot of points where rights came up either explicitly or, or implicitly, and I was always like, oh, yeah, interesting, I should pick that up today. Um, now I've decided for a, for a different approach because I think um, we also had discussions yesterday here in the forum and in the floors um, that we may be missing an umbrella, and um, we talked about one umbrella being... Uh, health, because obviously water, sanitation, nutrition all relate to health. Um, and I hope we can use the rights as another umbrella and also link that to the SDGs. Um, that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, and I'm going to want your help. Uh, if you can throw some rights to me that you think are relevant and that might form, well, that are relevant very closely and that are relevant a bit more widely, and then we'll get to an umbrella. No, because I have prepared rights. I'm just going to see whether you, actually, whether you actually guess the right ones, and we can have, of course, um, more rights. And I'm here 
encourage you to <laughs> work along. So. <laughs> Okay, the life to live life with dignity was one. It. Oh, you're coming with the big one right at the start. Um. Okay. Further comments? Thank you. That's a very good one. What other, what other human rights do you know of? Somebody said one already. Okay, the right to water and sanitation was just managed, uh, mentioned. I think Johannes will help you pin things. Perfect. Anna, and then you can... Um, yes, obviously. Okay, the right to food, obviously. You can yes. also take I out someone just mentioned. I lost the right to water. Here it is. I was like, okay, so can we put this here? The right to health was awesome. just mentioned. Awesome. Tool? Nutrition. Nutrition. There we need. Um, okay. We put right this to here. nutrition was just mentioned. We have someone in the back. Rights of the child. If 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 it's a longer intervention, maybe yeah. you can pass the we microphone need a mic. so we have the. Just, just wait for the microphone, please. This is Ben Hobbs from Generation Nutrition. It's on now. Oh, okay, to be free of the rights of a child to be free of uh, malnutrition. Uh, 20, Article 24C in the UN Rights of the Child. UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. Amazing. We're getting a lot of detail, which is great. We have one microphone. Um, We're missing some, I think. Um, rights to discuss, to speak out. Yeah. About the topic, because it's still considered as a taboo. Yeah. So I'm pinning. Education. Right to education. That one here. We're pinning that one. I don't know if you've already got it, but education, right? Yeah. To yeah that's the right to education Perfect. right and there. Shelter. Shelter, right to have shelter. Amazing. Um, this is called housing, but it, I mean, yeah. fine. Na, 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 na. Somebody said um, to speak out. Um, which I am going to call participation because it's the same concept and that's the technical term that we human rights lawyers use. Freedom from violence. Yes. Um... Yeah, I mean, there's also, if I could only remember what it's called now, um, there's also, there, yeah, I mean, participation is one thing and the right is actually another. Freedom of speech is um, Can you put that? Very good. Gender equity um, was mentioned. I'm going to call that equality. And I'm going to put it down here. And now... Now I'm going to start, um, because you're starting to get into points that are the second point, which is great. <laughs> um, so we have here, um, in terms of rights... Um, let me put this so, sort of up... Um, people mentioned the right to food, water, sanitation, housing or shelter, health, education, the right to speak, freedom of speech, um, to be free from violence, 
Um, somebody back there mentioned the Convention on the Rights of the Child and the right to nutritious food in there. Um, so I'm going to do an umbrella thing. That's the last thing I'll pin up in terms of rights. Okay, and what I'm hoping um, to, to sort of visualize, I don't know how well you're able to see this back there, um, but, and the very first mention was actually dignity, which was awesome. Um, okay, legally speaking, um, what's interesting, I think, in terms of trying to make it an umbrella, is that the rights to food, to water, sanitation, housing, and actually the right to, I left it down there, clothing, is also another one. They're all part of the right to an adequate standard of living in international human rights law. Um, so what I was thinking a lot about yesterday and, and this morning is we're talking nutrition, we're talking water, we're talking sanitation, and we had, I really like the mirror sessions, so don't get this the wrong way. Um, however, we, we also stuck to our silos and so what I'm hoping this, this shows is that we are, if, if we were all working with the human rights at the center of our mind, we'd all be working towards an adequate standard of, uh, the right to an adequate standard of living because food, water, sanitation, housing, which relates to it, of course, as well, all belong to this right. Um, of an adequate standard of living. And human rights, there's um, the sentence that I sometimes grow tired of, but it's very important. All human rights are interrelated, in interdependent, and indivisible. It's great that some of you mentioned the right to speak and the right to be free from violence, because unless I can speak out, I won't be able to participate. We're talking about a whole system of rights. Um, and a problem with one right is invariably going to affect other rights. Um, then we have the right to health. Malnutrition, stunting, problems with water, water uh, with problems with sanitation lead, as we all know, to diseases. So if we want especially the prevention elements, actually, and not just the curative elements. Working on all of this and this will actually also realize the right to health. Um, I need to go back to my notes. Um, can we put up these? Yes. Um, we've all seen this website. <laughs> Can we look at how these rights relate to those goals? Um, so if we look at the right to, um, to food, in which goals do we have that? Two, Two? yeah, obviously. Um, can anybody think of another one that relates to it? Yeah, because you have, yeah, yeah. And then, keep going, keep going. Uh, stop. <laughs> so I was thinking, and there I'm, I'm not a nutrition expert, nor am I an expert on the right to food in its, in its details, but I was thinking about 12 as well. Um, and I was also thinking, go a little bit further down, please, about 15. Um, so if we can see 12 and 15 together. Uh, even further. There. Um, because obviously food production relates to... Um, to uh, land use and land degradation. And when I was looking up how the right to food is defined in human rights terms, it speaks of physical and economic access 
at all times to safe, sufficient, nutritious food that is adequate and culturally acceptable and that is produced and consumed sustainably, preserving access to food for future generations. So you can also see how the human rights framework looks at things in a, in a holistic way. Um, more links with the SDGs that I noted. Um, we have water and sanitation in goal six, obviously. We have health in goal three. So we have, we cut across, yeah? Um, so does this make sense, the umbrella concept? Or the thought, the umbrella thought? Um, and then we have, we had a couple of discussions yesterday um, that were about we have governments, we have NGOs, who needs to do what. Um, and my point here is these are, somebody said that too, these are pre-existing commitments. Um, governments that have signed up to treaties that contain these rights, and we're talking several treaties, so any government in the world is party to at least some human rights treaty. Um, they have an obligation to realize these rights for everybody, and they have the obligation to do that as expeditiously as possible, using all of the resources at their disposal, including international assistance and cooperation, which is where the development work comes in. So that too is in the human rights framework. And now we have this new agenda that everybody is so excited about, and we have a political commitment to reach all. And this is where I think um, I want to take you briefly to the human rights principles, because that relates to the how. Um, I never see, I never look at these things. Thank you for waving. <laughs> Um, back to the board. So somebody already said the right to speak out. Somebody already said equality um, or the right to gender equality. Um, human rights want realization of... Where are they? All of these rights for all. Um, and the most fundamental concept of human rights is that we're all born equal in dignity and rights. So equality is the most fundamental of all of the human rights principles. Um, we know in the WASH sector we have very good data on inequalities and more and more better data on existing inequalities in WASH services. I learned yesterday that in the nutrition sector that's not so much the case, but my hunch would be that the inequalities in nutrition um, and both availability and uptake of food are very much the same as they are in WASH because they are also very much the same in housing and in health and everything else. Um, unless we focus, and this is again what human rights say, unless we focus on where it hurts the most and where it's the most difficult to actually make progress, that political agenda of getting universal water, sanitation, food, health, and so forth is not going to work. It's as simple as that. So I think that can be one of the incentives for us to work together, because if the groups that are marginalized from good nutrition status, from water and sanitation, are the same, then, and we all work towards this agenda, then, to me, that's an incentive. Um, participation. You won't get solutions right unless you speak with people. Um, Non-discrimination is another human rights principle that relates closely to equality. Um, if we don't tackle causes of discrimination that often, or, let me put this differently, if we don't tackle systemic discrimination that prevents people from actually accessing 
the things they need, we're not going to get to everyone. Um, closely related to participation, you have a human rights principle of having access to information. You have, a very important in nutrition, because it was even in the definition of the human right, sustainability, but also very important in water and sanitation. If we don't get the waste treatment aspect of sanitation tackled, um, well, people are continue, going to continue to be sick, um, ecosystems are going to be affected and so forth. Water is going to be affected. Um, and accountability. And this um, speaks very much to government, of course. We need systems where if things don't work, there's a place to go to. I think there's often a thought in, in setting up programs that... Um, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to do this and then everything is going to be beautiful. This is go going to be our outcome at the end. But they're complex programs. I mean, if you look at the, your presentations about your ministries, all of the work that you've got to do, um, things are going to go wrong. Like, there, there are things in policy, in programming, in legislation, in everything that is at a system, systemic level that are going to cause problems. So I, I think that's not the problem in itself. The problem is that very often the accountability is not in it. Um, and so if a problem appears, there is no place to go to. There is no place to say, hey, this doesn't work for me. How do we, how do we solve this? Um, now I've talked longer than I thought I would. Um, questions? I look at a lot of puzzled faces. <laughs> I hope I haven't completely puzzled you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you talk of rights to information. And I was thinking right to accessibility. And access could be information, access could be roads. So I have not seen. Uh, is it no, no right for roads, uh, good roads, uh, no right for... How will you address issues of sustainability? Of, I mean, uh, how do you access each other? If, is it right or is it not? Um, a right to roads, so to speak? Um, not really. Um, but you're very right. Um, if there is a, a right to access information and a right to participation, you do need to think how do people get from A to B, how do people talk to each other. Um, I know there is emerging discussions about a right to connectivity and electricity. Um, so yes, having, having access to information also comes with... Um, the infrastructure around it, right? That that you will need to um, to to access that right to practice it. Yeah. Um, yes, you were proposing to use the umbrella approach and um, to use the right to adequate standard of living. And I wondered, in how far is this right being used uh, already to advocate, uh, to advocate on? The uh, reason why I'm asking is that I think that uh, it's, a very, uh, it's a right on a very high level and uh, we tend to make things smaller and smaller and smaller uh, because it's easier to advocate on one specific Issue. So, I, I, for example, access to sanitation or water instead of this really high level of rights. So I wondered whether you have examples, know of any examples in which the right to adequate standard of living is actually used uh, as an advocacy tool. Is this on? Yeah. Um, Anna, thanks for the, the really good presentation. Um, I have a question uh, about what's happening in terms of going from right to water and sanitation to rights to water and sanitation. 
And if you could maybe explain to us a little bit why that matters um, and what the difference would be and whether that might have an impact on how we deliver against the SDGs. Yeah, I have uh, one comment and one question which partly goes to Hannah but also partly to um, the two presenters from Burkina and South Sudan who spoke before. Um, the comment on uh, the, the right to roads or uh, access to information actually, I think what, what Peter was talking about is not only roads to access information but also roads to access all the services which you have rights for. So, I mean, a lot of the time you also need to move for that and you need, you need to be able to, or you need some infrastructure to get services to the people as well. So, um, I would see a connection there. The other question is more, um, if we compare the two umbrellas, um, public health or the rights umbrella, the, the largest difference I would see is um, that under the rights umbrella, you have health, nutrition, wash at the same level um, going towards a bigger umbrella, which is an adequate standard of living. And in that sense, it might be that the rights umbrella is um, a bit more catering maybe for the fear that if we put everything under a public health umbrella, there was a fear yesterday that sort of the wash sector or wash as an agenda on its own will fall off and that um, maybe also bodies who have um, a responsibility for a certain sector will lose importance or will lose influence, so to say. So on, on the one hand, I think the, the rights umbrella is more, uh, more sensitive to that. On the other hand, uh, you have more the different silos under it or you have a bigger danger of that because everybody can more or less do their their own thing as, as they did before. So if you could maybe comment on that and maybe also if the people from the ministries could comment on that, how they see the two compared to each other. Okay. As just as the timekeeper a, I see more hands in the room. B, those were quite extensive questions. So I'll have to ask you to be quite concise. We do go to a break afterwards, and I don't want to sort of, uh, yeah, beep, beep. <laughs> um, so so I, would, I would like to, to ask for some short answers to those questions, because I think they are very important. But then afterwards, I would, I would ask people to approach Hannah in the break also for more detailed information. Okay. Um, challenge accepted. Thank you, Lotte, because that's a, that's a thought that I didn't manage to make clear with the right roads. Now, uh, it is the task of, of government and the obligation under human rights law to realize all of these rights, yeah? And they're all at the same level, as you said. And that's a big job, and governments need to make those overarching decisions of for instance, do we invest in better roads because it will improve access to hospitals, to schools, to, uh, I don't know, to all, all sorts of things. Um, and so that's a good underlying investment. Or do we do something else? Because we, we have challenges in other areas that affect our ability or the abili yeah, our ability to make those rights a reality. Um, on the other point, that I think, if I try to answer that now, I'll be here for half an hour. I think that's an excellent thought, though, um, on using the rights or more the public health and the dangers there. And I think that may be one of the points that we want to take forward in discussions after this, um, because there's a lot to it. Um, on the use of... Article 11, that's the right to an adequate standard of living, um, and using that for advocacy um, for all of the things combined. I don't have a concrete example, um, but what I would suggest is that if you use human rights as a tool for advocacy, you're always linking back to dignity and I think that's quite important to make that explicit then in advocacy as well. 
because no one right can ever stand on its own. Um, also, just a, yeah, that's, that's how I would frame it in my mind. Um, on the plural, that's a big discussion here <laughs> starting there. Um, we, along with other NGOs, some of them in this room, um, are advocating for the human rights to water and sanitation. Um, and these discussions are actually going on in New York at the moment in a resolution process. Um, this is, and there is a fear, hang on a second, we're creating a new right, we're creating more silos and so forth, which is the challenge in that discussion. Um, but we, we keep with dignity and the right to an adequate standard of living and then all of those elements. The reason why I think that's important is because wash sector practice ha actually has understood you need to also look at water and sanitation while keeping it together separately. If you don't have a dedicated focus on sanitation, it's not going to happen. Um, so are we creating silos without having an umbrella? There is that danger. It's a trap we shouldn't fall into. Um, water sanitation ministries, there's a push for, for putting them together. We now hear of ministries where nutrition is integrated. That's great. Um, but do we need clarity, on the other hand, in how we define those things, also in human rights terms? And that's what I think is also needed. And water and sanitation are distinct there. We have a definition that already pulls it apart to some extent. We don't have, language-wise, a plural yet. I'm hoping we'll get it. Let's see. Um, thank you for um, those questions as well and your participation. And yeah, f feel free, come, come to me. Let's, let's discuss uh, over coffee and lunch and throughout the day. Thank you, Hannah. I think it will be good to, to actually engage with you further on this issue because there are, the thing that strikes me with the new um, global agenda that we have is that um, it is closer linked to the human rights, it is universal, it is uh, indivisible, it is sort of all interlinked. We have goals for fighting inequalities and so on, but the thing that brings us closer to where we were saying yesterday we should talk about the people are the rights. These are the rights of every individual. This is where it goes about not fulfilling one of the rights, basically undermines the possibility to be able to fully have fulfillment in another right. Yeah? So if you don't have access to water and sanitation, you can't fulfill your right to health. And this is where I think it really comes in where the single rights that are there because they apply to one individual in entirety are really linked. So thank you for, for that important block on actually having us, yeah, having us look at those, those rights aspects. I am sorry that I do have to close it at this point. Um, we'll go to a break a coffee break for, for 20 minutes, and um, we'll begin to round you back up uh, 10 past um, the hour. So a round of applause for Hannah, please, and then we'll go through that.